Hello, and welcome to episode 35 of Sir Astro's Star Wars painting series. In this episode, we're going to paint the Rancor from Fantasy Flight Games' Star Wars Imperial Assault. The Rancor is a spectacular miniature, and due to having quite a limited colour palette and a highly textured skin, it's also quite straightforward to paint. I'm basing my colour choices roughly on the Rancor depicted in the movie, although there are of course a lot more than one Rancor in the Star Wars universe, so there's nothing wrong with playing around with a variety of colour schemes when painting the miniature. Let's now take a look at the painting stages. In the preparation stage, I've glued all of the parts of the miniature together apart from the base, and I've chosen to apply some Xenothal highlights. We're then going to apply our base colours, and we'll be doing some rough wet blending on the skin to block in our main areas of light and shade. We'll also apply a light dry brush to select areas to sharpen the texture. We'll then apply a general shade to the entire miniature, followed with three different local shades to create some depth and tonal variety. Next we can apply some highlights which will focus mostly on the claws and teeth, along with a few minimal highlights for the skin. Our finishing touches will include looking at how to create a swampy base, as well as applying some localised gloss varnish and saliva effects. Let's begin. Assembling the miniature is quite straightforward, although I did have to cut part of the base to get the Rancor to fit. I'm gluing the entire figure together with superglue, except for the base which I'll be attaching at the end. This will allow me easier access to the underside of the beast, as well as the base itself, to which I'll be giving a scenic treatment later on. As we'd expect with any large multi-part figure, there will be several gaps that you'll want to fill with something like green stuff or milliput. Here on the back was a particularly large gap, and I also filled in the small cracks around the neck, jawline and shoulders. I've chosen to prime the figure in black, which I'm following with some quick Xenothal highlights using Vallejo's Cold Grey, which I'm spraying from a roughly 45 degree angle, and some Dead White, which I'm spraying from above. This can easily be done with spray cans if you don't have an airbrush, and you could also skip the grey if you like. These Xenothal highlights provide us with a useful guide when we come to placing our own light and shade, and we'll generally have an easier time when applying our base colours. However, you could just prime with a straight black, white or grey if you prefer. Let's now apply our base colours. I'm going to begin by painting the inside of the mouth using a roughly equal mix of Bugman's Glow and Screamer Pink. I'm doing this first as it doesn't matter if we hit the teeth at this stage. We're now going to paint the skin. To do this, I'm going to use an equal mix of XV88 and Steel Legion Drab for my main skin tone, which I'm then going to wet blend into some Rhinox Hide for the shadows, and I'm going to mix a little Screaming Skull into the brightest spots. Because the figure is quite large, we'll need to prepare quite a generous quantity of the colours. Here I'm mixing my XV88 and Steel Legion Drab, which I'm thinning with a little water, but you can also mix in something that has retarder in, like Vallejo's Glaze Medium, which will slow the drying time and give us longer to blend the paints on the miniature. Next to this I've got my Rhinox Hide, which I'm also adding a little Glaze Medium to. And here I've got my Screaming Skull. I'm going to paint the Rancor section by section, starting with the left leg, and I'm going to use the main skin tone to paint all of the mid to light areas of the skin. I'm now going to paint the shadowed areas with the Rhinox Hide, and I'm then roughly blending the dark and light areas together whilst the paint is still wet. This will often involve giving the brush a quick rinse, then pulling the lighter tone down repeatedly over the darker area. I might then mix in a little Screaming Skull just to the top of the knee. We 
can now continue round the rest of the miniature, working in the same way. We can afford to be a little messy and imprecise here, since the shading we'll be adding later will form quite a heavily textured overlay. What's important is that as well as applying the base colour, we're blocking in the main global areas of light and shade, which means we'll only need to add one or two small highlights later on. Although this is a fun process, if you don't want to wet blend, you could simply let the mid base tone dry completely, then paint on the Rhinox hide and feather the edges with a damp brush. The other areas I've chosen to lighten with the screaming skull besides the knees are the top surface of the arms and the top of the head. Once that's completely dry, I'm going to provide a very light dry brush using Rakarth Flesh to sharpen the detail of the skin texture. I'm hitting most of the textured portions of the miniature, but keeping the pressure very light so as to just pick out the most raised contours of the skin and minimise the chalky look that dry brushing often brings about. We can now paint the claws, teeth and various spines, and I'm using Carrick Stone for this. Finally, we're going to paint the eyes with some pure black. We're now ready to apply some shades. I'm going to begin by applying a global shade to the entire miniature, using an almost equal mix of Agrax Earthshade and Athonian Camo Shade. As well as the skin, I'm happy for this to hit the bones, claws and mouth area too. This will do a nice job of articulating the skin texture and unifying the skin tones. Although this shade has darkened the entire miniature, we can still see our broad areas of light and shade nicely showing through. I'm now going to introduce some tonal variety by applying three different coloured shades to discrete sections of the miniature. Firstly, I'm going to create a 3 to 1 mix of Celia Green Shade and Nuln Oil, which I'm thinning with a roughly equal measure of Lamian Medium. I'm using this to tint the top of the head, back and shoulders, as well as the elbows. I imagine this could almost suggest some kind of moss living on the back of the creature. The reason I've thinned the shade is just so I can build the effect up more gently in multiple layers if I wish. I found two layers gave me a look I was happy with.
Next, I'm going to create a 3 to 1 mix of Reichland Flesh Shade and Fugan Orange, once again thinned with an equal measure of medium. I'm applying a single layer of this to tint the face and hands. This simple zoning of different areas of the miniature with varying colours is a nice easy way to break the monotony of an essentially monochrome character. This can be feathered out with a damp brush to help create a more blended look. Finally, I'm going to mix some Agrax Earthshade, Nuln Oil and Drukii Violet to help boost the depth in the shadows. I'm also going to further darken the inside of the mouth with this. I'm applying two or three layers of this to really max out the depth. We're now ready to add some highlights. Since we've already achieved a good level of global contrast, we only need to add a few small highlights to the skin. I'm starting with an equal mix of XV88 and Carrick Stone, which I'm using to place a few delicate highlights around the eyes and on the top of the head and back. I'm going to mix in a little castell and green in a separate well and do a little retouching of the spines on the back where some of the paint has worn off through handling. I'm also going to reapply a little of the Celia Green Shade and Non Oil mix. I'm then going to lighten the highlight tones with the addition of some Screaming Skull. Next, I'm going to lighten the claws, teeth and spines, firstly with a reapplication of Carrick Stone. Here we want to create a simple gradation of dark at the base to light at the tip. I'm now going to use Screaming Skull for the upper highlights.
If any of the transitions seem a little harsh, we can always brush on some thinned Carrick stone to smooth things out. I'm going to finish the highlights off with a little ivory which I'm applying just to the teeth and the claws. Once we're happy with the highlights, we're ready for some finishing touches. I'm going to add a couple of finishing touches to the Rancor in a moment, but first I'm going to turn my attention to the base. I've chosen to create a swampy environment which will include muddy ground and murky pools. For the muddy ground, I'm using Vallejo's Brown Earth, but the Citadel basing products, such as Sterland Mud, would also be fine. For the water, I'm using Woodland Scenic's Realistic Water, which gives a very smooth, flat finish. Vallejo's water effects would also be fine, although the finish might be a little less even. I've also raided my collection of leftover miniature parts for various pieces of debris I'm going to litter the ground with. This includes skull and bone remains, as well as any old bits of scrap metal. The look I'm going for is very much inspired by the wonderful tile art from the Jabba's Realm expansion. Finally, I'll be using various bits of foliage and grass, and I'll include a full list of products I'm using in the video description. I'm going to begin by marking out where the Rancor is going to go once the base is complete. I'm also going to sketch out where I want the sections of water to be. I'm now using my basing paste, Vallejo's Brown Earth, to build up the muddy ground, taking care to avoid the marked out sections, and I'm using a small flat brush for this. For the sections of water, you could leave the base completely smooth and flat, but I've chosen to lay down a thin layer of the paste to produce a more textured bed that will show through the still waters of the swamp. Notice I've ensured that there's still a very clear boundary that marks the edge of the pool. I'm now going to embed some of my debris into the mud. After leaving the paste overnight to dry, I'm also going to superglue one or two bits of debris onto the bed of the watery pools, with the intention that they'll be partially protruding from the water once the effect is complete. Before painting, I'm going to prime the base in grey, although the colour isn't important. I'm now going to paint the muddy areas using Monfang Brown. I'm following this with quite a heavy dry brush of XV88. I'm then applying a lighter dry brush with Terminata Stone. Something like Screaming Skull would also be fine here. Next, I'm going to paint the scattered bones using the same colours we used for the Rancor's claws. And I'm painting the scrap metal with some lead belcher mixed with a little steel legion drab. I'm following this with some edge highlights using Stormhost Silver. For the water, I'm going to take some Nurgling Green and some Stegodon Scale Green, and I'm going to mix a touch of Steel Legion Drab into each. Here on the left, I'm mixing my Nurgling Green with the Steel Legion Drab, and on the right, my Stegodon Scale Green, also with the Steel Legion Drab. I'm then going to paint the shallowest parts of the water with a lighter tone. This just means laying down a strip along the border of the pool. 
I'm then painting the deeper sections with the darker tone and loosely wet blending the two together. Once completely dry, I'm going to shade the entire base with Agrax Earthshade. I'm covering the pools with this, but removing the excess to allow the blue-green tones to still show through. After painting the rim of the base, we can go ahead and provide a protective matte spray to both the base and the Rancor. We're now ready to apply our water effects. This can be simply poured on or applied with a pipette. Either way, I like to decant some into the cap first. We're then simply going to deposit the water effect into our pools up to a height of 1 8 of an inch. As you can see, the fluid is quite viscous, which means we can bring it right up to the edge of the base without worrying about it flowing over the edge. You may like to pull the edges out at the shoreline for a more natural look. This then needs to be left for a full 24 hours to cure. We can see that the water has dried to leave a crystal clear finish and that there's been some slight shrinkage. We can then apply a second layer, but before we do, I'm going to thin down some Nurgling Green and spread a slightly uneven layer across the surface to create a more murky look. These cloudy stains will appear beneath the surface of the water once we've applied our second application, creating a richer, more multi-layered effect. I'm now applying my second layer of water on top and once again leaving it for a full day to dry. We can see that the water now has a nice flat surface and a subtly murky look. We can stick the Rancor down at any point now, but I'm going to first apply some greenery to the central part of the base. You can of course add whatever modelling products you have access to and you can add as much or as little as you like. I'm applying quite a varied combination of products which you can find listed in the video description. Some of my favourites include the Lowland Shrubs by Army Painter, various shades of Silfloor Tufts and Leaf Litter. I'm now gluing the Rancor to the base before adding my last pieces of foliage. We can also add a little muddy weathering to the feet using something like Mornfang Brown mixed with a little Castellan Green. There are now three remaining finishing touches I'd like to add to my Rancor. Firstly, I'm going to use some pure white to add a couple of small dots to each eye. These could either be construed as a very pale iris or simply glints of light. My second finishing touch is to apply some thinned gloss varnish. I'm thinning this with a roughly equal measure of water and applying it to the eyes, mouth and nose.
Finally, I'm going to create a stringy saliva effect using UHU glue. All we do here is simply deposit some glue onto the palette, then use a modeling tool to stretch the glue between the teeth of the monster. There's nothing wrong with leaving deposits of this around the teeth and mouth area, since it just looks like clear saliva. This is quite an easy and striking effect to achieve, although it's worth noting that because the strands of glue are so thin, it wouldn't take much to break them if the figure is mishandled. You could also add some blood if you wish, and you can refer to episode 32 for some tips on doing so. And this completes the Rancor. Thank you as always for watching, and for your continued positive support of this series. Even if you're not currently painting the Rancor, I hope you find some of the additional basing ideas and effects useful for other projects, now or in the future. My special thanks go to the kind patrons who are financing this series. I'm incredibly grateful for their ongoing support that enables me to put so many hours into working on these videos. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Imperial Assault. Happy painting!